SkullEmojiTrumpetEmoji.com is not a website you can visit, and it probably never will be. But you can visit SkullEmojiTrumpetEmoji.tk right now. It's a site that I made where you can go and thank Mr. Skeletal. But what's the difference here? Why is one okay and the other isn't? Also, how does putting emoji in the domain of a website even work in the first place? And why do my very cool emoji disappear from the search bar when I actually load this site? Your browser doesn't know what a YouTube.com is, or more importantly, where it is. When you type in the name of a website to your browser, it has to translate the nice human-friendly names like YouTube.com to the IP address of the server that hosts that particular website. The way it accomplishes this is via DNS, the domain name system. Very quickly and glossing over a lot of details, names for websites on the internet can be broken down into their component parts called labels, which are separated by periods and organized into a hierarchy. The kind of website you're probably most familiar with consists of two or three labels, maybe a subdomain, then the domain name followed by the top-level domain, or TLD. Top-level domains are at the top of the hierarchy, and domain names are one step down. TLDs represent categories of websites, and domains represent the sites themselves. For instance, the .gov TLD is for government entities. WA.gov and CA.gov are the domains for Washington and California's state websites, both under the .gov TLD. The domain name system was first introduced in 1983, as computers were starting to become kind of a big deal, and figuring out IP addresses for domain names from a single text file living on a single server was starting to become a hassle. Yes, that's really how they did it in the beginning. Whenever you ask your browser to go to a website, it sends out a DNS request. Your browser uses a program called a DNS resolver to carry out a series of steps needed to go from a domain name to an IP address. If the resolver doesn't already have the IP address cached, first it asks one of a few root DNS servers, whose IP addresses are coded into the resolver itself, so it doesn't need to look them up. Root DNS servers are big important name servers that know where to reach the name servers for top-level domains, like .com or .org. These TLD name servers hold information about which servers are authoritative, which should be treated as correct and accurate, for a particular domain under that TLD, for instance, example.com under the .com top-level domain. Once your resolver knows which servers are authoritative for the requested domain, it contacts them directly to obtain the IP address associated with the domain name. Finally, it returns this IP address to the browser, allowing it to establish a connection with the requested website. Cool, but how is all that relevant? Well, one limitation of DNS is that it only supports ASCII characters. But not all languages use alphabets that match ASCII's Roman alphabet characters. And believe it or not, there are people on the internet who speak languages that don't use the Roman alphabet. Y'all ever seen the Cyrillic or Arabic alphabets? So there needs to be some way of supporting characters and domain names that aren't only the Roman alphabet characters from ASCII. Enter Punicode. Punicode is a way of encoding arbitrary Unicode code points into strings that are all ASCII characters. This means domains that include non-ASCII characters can be translated to ASCII, which then means that DNS can still be used. When querying a domain name containing Unicode characters, the first step is conversion to a punicoded string. Then your browser performs a DNS query as normal. This is why you might see your browser's address bar change to something funky when you try to visit a domain with a Unicode character in it, xn dash dash something something. That's the punicoded string. But you might also not see this happen. Some browsers, like Safari on iOS, might show the original Unicode domain name, not the punicoded string, especially if there's an emoji in the domain itself. Okay, that's how Unicode characters work in domain names. But this just seems like it should mean that any Unicode characters are valid in domain names. Right, it should mean this, and in fact, there's no technical reason that emoji can't be used in any domain. In fact, some registrars will tell you that the punicoded versions of emoji domain names are available, but then fail when you try to register the domain. Clearly, we have the technology, so why doesn't it work? Well, there's another piece to the puzzle, a protocol called IDNA 2008. But before that, let me tell you about this video's sponsor, Aura. Pop quiz for you. Can you tell the difference between this domain and this domain? Well, if you can't, Aura's got you covered. You see, I registered both of these domains. One is a nice, friendly, legitimate domain, and the other one is a dark web hacker evil one. But it's hard to tell the domain names apart. If you're fooled by the malicious site and, oops, accidentally enter your credit card number, home address, full social security number, fingerprints, and retinal scans, Aura can help you lock down your online identity and monitor your credit. Jokes aside though, Aura is legit. Last year, my partner and I had our car broken into and a bunch of our stuff stolen, including credit cards, and that really sucked. But signing up for Aura to monitor our credit gave us the peace of mind to not have to worry about credit card fraud. Aura did detect some fraud a few days later and let us know about it right away. 
Aura has a bunch of other tools too, including a password manager, which you should definitely be using at this point, and a VPN. They'll even contact data brokers on your behalf to get your personal data deleted instead of sold. You can try Aura out for free for two weeks at aura.com slash devdetour. Now back to the video. So that thing about these two domains being difficult to tell apart? This is actually one of the reasons that emoji aren't allowed in most domains. Domains that to humans appear visually similar to a different string are called homographs, and bad actors might register domains like these to mimic legitimate ones. This is called a homograph attack, like replacing the letter M with the letters R and N, which if you squint, might look the same. But you can definitely distinguish between these if you're paying attention. With Unicode and domain names though, this can be much harder. Ever seen that meme about replacing a semicolon with a Greek question mark? That's the exact kind of thing that attackers could do with domain names using Unicode characters. There are almost 150,000 Unicode characters that can be formed, and some of these are almost indistinguishable from ASCII ones. For instance, take mydomain.example versus mydomain.example. These look the same, right? Actually, no. The O in the first one is not an O at all. It's a Greek small letter Omicron. But depending on your font, you may not be able to tell these apart at all. Clearly, allowing any Unicode characters in the domain name could be problematic. And this is definitely a problem for emoji too. There are lots of variants of emoji that are really similar, like the frowning and slightly frowning ones from before, but also emoji that have different variants for skin color or ones that can be combined. Without having a reference of all the variants right in front of you, can you tell the difference between medium thumbs up and medium light thumbs up? What if your color balance is off, or you turn your screen brightness down, or the background color changes? Further still, while the Unicode code points that define emoji are standardized, there's no standard for rendering them, so you might see something completely different on different platforms. In some cases, you can look at the final URL of the page to detect something like this. If you click a link to wikipedia.org and end up at xn wikipedia86.org you know something's wrong. But for emoji at least, browsers don't always show you the punicoded string. Also, think about this for emoji. Even with the punicoded version available to you, would you be able to tell which is the real domain and which is the malicious one? Between xn-64ha.ws and xn-838ha.ws, you'd have to remember precisely the sequence of letters and numbers for the legitimate domain to not fall victim to a homograph attack. To try and prevent this kind of thing from happening, IDNA 2008 defines a list of Unicode characters that are allowed and disallowed. Ones like these are allowed, but many others, including emoji, are not. I'll link to the whole list in the description. So this is why you can't have emoji in most domain names. They're explicitly not allowed by IDNA 2008, which most TLDs follow. But the key thing to keep in mind is that there's no technical reason that emoji can't be in a domain name. Punicode is still able to convert arbitrary Unicode code points to valid ASCII just fine. In fact, there are a few emoji domains that were created under the .com TLD before IDNA 2008, and these have been grandfathered in and still work today. Just new emoji domains can't be created. There are a few top-level domains today, though, that don't follow IDNA 2008, and for these, you can totally have emoji in the domain. Country TLDs like .ws for Samoa, .to for Tonga, and .tk for Tokelau all allow emoji. And by buying a domain under one of these TLDs, I'm allowed to have emoji. This is why I was able to register skull emoji trumpet emoji .tk, but not skull emoji trumpet emoji .com. Don't forget to thank Mr. Skeletal and subscribe if you enjoyed. And if you really enjoyed, consider supporting me on Ko-Fi. Coffee? Is it coffee? See you next time.